and from those who call themselves Christians, we took a covenant, but they have abandoned it. Good part of the message that was sent to them, so we planted among them enmity and hatred till the day of resurrection. Allah have a plan for you Christians. He will spread the hatred between you. Fight against those who believe not in Allah, nor the last days, nor forbid what is has been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger. Is that an order for a certain time? No. Do you see it says fight for a certain time? No. What is the condition for fighting? The condition is very simple. Anyone who don't believe in Allah, fight him. Which means he is a Christian, he is a Jew, he is a Hindu. It doesn't matter. These are conditions. Even though this verse is making name clearly the Christians and the Jews. But the condition is so clear. Fight who? Not fight those who are fighting you. No. Fight those who don't believe in Allah and the last day of Allah. And what is forbidden by Allah? And those who don't acknowledge Islam. So if you don't consider Islam as your religion, kill him. This is the truth, my friend. Everybody is saying, you know, for us, we don't hate Muslims and we will never hate the Muslims. Even they do, do, do a lot, all, all this violence. But we are here to say the truth. The problem is not the Muslim. The problem is not the terrorist. The problem is this book. You fight the Christians and the Jews until they pay the jizya and they should be humiliated. Islam is a supremacist cult. They believe that they are the only one have the right to rule and the rest of the world are a bunch of animals. And they are dirty, as you see in the front of you. It was the order of Muhammad to expel all the Christians and all the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula. Is that Islamic? To kick Christians and Jews from their lands, from their houses. Yes, it is Islamic. Uh, Amlex, I don't like this kind of conversation and don't say that. No, I don't want to believe that God, he cursed the Muslims. God, you see, I pray that God will help the Muslims, not to curse them. I'm not here to curse the Muslims. You get, you get my message wrong. Muslims are victims like you. At the end of the day, everybody die. Because of a stupid cult leader, his name is Muhammad. And that is the truth. So if you join the party of hate, you became just like them. And you did not solve the problem. The problem is not the Muslims. The problem is Islam. So what do you want? Like we start cursing each other now and we want to kill each other? No, this is not a solution. We want the Muslims to join us, to fight the cult of Islam, to fight this Yellow Pages books, because those terrorists are doing what is written there. The truth is so clear. The Sheikh who said in the YouTube, in the, in the, in the Twitter video, that no, this is the land made only for Muslims. This is the land made only for Muslims. But he's not lying. This is what he learned. Because of what we ordained for the children of Israel, that if anyone killed the person that is not a reiteration of a murder, etc. This is for the Jews. Then you ask the Muslims, okay, so this is Allah, he gave it to Moses, to the Jews, all right? It says, if you kill an innocent person, uh -huh, who is the innocent person? Right away, they will say to you, someone is not a Muslim, is not considered an innocent. There's, a, there's an interview between, uh, what is his name? And Jam Shawadri in the BBC. Go watch it. The BBC guy, he said to him, do you condemn the killing of innocent people in London? The guy, he said, no. He said, why you don't condemn the innocent people? He said, because you don't understand. 
in Islam, in the eyes of Allah, innocent is only Muslims. So they fool you, they show you this verse, but they don't tell you that in Islam, if you are not a Muslim, you are guilty. And this is exactly what is in that, in that interview. You can go and search it for yourself. When you meet a Christian or a Jew in the street, don't salute them, don't say Assalamu Alaikum. And you have to humiliate them. You have, when it says here the narrow part of the road, what narrow part? There's no narrow part. This is the sewage. In the old day, the sewage used to be open, the deep deep tunnel in the in the in the side of the road where the dirty water goes so when a muslim walk by and you are a christian or a jew coming from the front of facing him the muslim will say to you go down and you should obey immediately you know they might say to you he is giving you his own interpretation about the quran and the quran does not mean that this guy is lying you know you know the game we know it This is the book of Ibn Kathir, explaining chapter 9, verse number 29. You can open it yourself, open the link and read it yourself, take your time. By the way, the English translation has nothing to do with the Arabic. It's a lot nicer, and Arabic is a lot more disgusting. A lot more disgusting. But we will show you the English, just to show you. Paying jizya, they say to you, jizya is a tax. You pay tax, brother. Don't you pay tax in America, brother? Big fat lie. Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. Do you and look what it says here. And feel themselves sub subdued. So disgraced, humiliated. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma. Who is the people of the Dhimma? Is in the Christians and the Jews who pay money to live. Otherwise, they will be killed or elevate them above the Muslims. For they are miserable, disgraced, humiliated. Muslim recorded from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, who said? This is not the Caliphate al-Baghdadi. This is the Prophet. Don't initiate salam to the Jews and the Christians. And if you meet any of them in the road, force them to the most narrowest alley. This is why the leader of the faith follow Umar ibn al-Khattab their best leader. This guy is a very good, nice guy. They said to you, he was a perfect man. They said to you, Umar al-Khattab, he did not enter the Holy Church in Jerusalem, so Muslims will not take over it. This is a proof to us that you Muslims take over churches, right? He did not enter that church for a reason, because he was afraid that will ignite revolution between the Christian community in Europe, and they will come for the crusade immediately. He was just being smart. They say to you the crusade, the crusade, in fact, it was because of the Muslims attacked the Christian, not because the opposite. If not the crusade, all of you will be slaves of those Abdul terrorists. It is the Muslims who attack first, as you see. This is their own words. This is their own interpretation. The Prophet, he took an army and he attacked Syria and he attacked Jerusalem. The message of Allah, march heading toward Asham, Asham, which means Syria, which is occupied by the Roman, to fight the Roman, until he reached the book, where he set a camp for about 20 days. Muhammad, he could not make it. Then the Muslims, they came back and they attack again. But the stupid ones, they say to you, the crusade. But in fact, the crusade, they were defending, not attacking. So the prophet said, if you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, humiliate him, force him to walk in the sewage. This is the ethic of a prophet Muhammad, who every scumbag in the West from those Western leaders, they keep saying to us, Islam is a peaceful religion. Is that ISIS? No. This is the Prophet Muhammad himself. Look, we have a Muslim saying, CP is a hate preacher. <laughs> because I'm reading your book, I am hate preacher? What is, your, uh, what is your comment about your Prophet saying, if you see a Christian or a Jew in the street, humiliate him, Mr. Love Preacher. As long as you are a love preaching person, why you follow Muhammad?
Hmm? I follow Jesus who said, love your enemy. You follow Muhammad who said, if you see a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddha in the street, spit at him, beat him up or force him to walk in the sewage if he disobey. So what is your statement? I mean, you read for them their books, you show them in the stream what their prophet said, they have a comment about me, not a comment about their prophet. What do you comment about your prophet saying that? And look here, it says, the Muhammad, he said, you have to humiliate the Christian, and then it says here, this is why the leader, the faithful, Omar ibn Khattab, may Allah pleased with him, demanded his well-known conditions to be met by the Christians, those conditions to be ensured that they, they continue of their humiliation. Do you see it? This continued from who? From the time of Muhammad. Do you have a comment, Muslims? Is Umar al Khattab was a member of ISIS? Was Muhammad a member of ISIS? In fact, those are the true founders of ISIS. Prove me wrong. Everything I say, it's in the front of you. And because Muhammad is a Nazi fascist person, he taught a religion which make people believe that they are supremacist. Look what Muhammad said. You are the best of mankind. Who are they, the best of mankind? The Muslims. This is why you see this guy in Twitter, he was saying the following. Islam does not permit standing up for flag, national flag of any country. You stand only up for Islamic flag. Hindus, Christians, Buddhas are Kafirs. Allah created this land for Muslims. Kafirs are, have the right to live only Muslims have the right to rule. Loyalty of Muslims should be only for the nation ruled by Muslims. Where did he get this from? This filthy idiot. He got it from here. The Quran is a fascist book saying that Islam is a superior and Muslims are superior. And they are the best of mankind. And their duty is to bring people with the chains around their necks. He gagged their eyes and he watched them die slowly after he cut their hands and their feet and he crucified them and he put nails after he heated with fire in the eyes of those people. So why they say to us Islamic, you know, ISIS is violence. Is that, a, is that the prophet they say to us he is a merciful? I agree, not every Muslim want to be a terrorist. But that's not because Islam is not a terrorism religion. That's because he don't want to be. Or maybe he is not too much of a believer. He is just a Muslim by name. Muhammad himself, he says, I was victorious by terror. Is that me saying that or Muhammad saying that? Muhammad was the first terrorist. Any Muslim want to say to me, you are lying. Why I am sad? 299 people, 300 something now, they pass, and many, and 500, many of them, they lost their arms, their fingers, their legs, and you are telling me why you are sad? Somebody told you that those are not a human, they don't have a family? How many orphans we have today? People, they go to the church. Imagine you send your son, he is seven years old, to the church to pray, and he come back to you, pieces. They can't even recognize him. And why you are sad? Look what, uh, look what Fahim, the potato Fahim, what he's saying to me. Just to show you that to be a believer in the cult of Islam, you have to be suffering from low IQ. Look what this guy, he said to me. If you want truth about Islam, please show, show your face. Fahim, I have an advice for you. Don't ever get married. Because I believe if you get married, either your wife or your mother-in-law, she will, she will push you from the fifth floor. I mean, who is the lucky woman? She will be your wife. She will be so excited to hear someone so smart like you. So if you want to learn the truth about Islam, show us your face. What is the connection? Why somebody want to go and kill himself between those Christians? 
Because simply, Muhammad told him to do that. He is a victim of the biggest terrorist in this universe. Look what Muhammad he said. I was victorious by terror from a distance of one month journey. A month journey. Because obviously the Prophet was so nice to the point from a dis distance of a month. People will be terrified. I've been victorious, not help, false translation, by terror. And Allah, he gave him the special spoils to rape the Christian women and the Jewish women and to take their money. Was Muhammad telling the truth? When he said, I was victorious by terror? Or this is a fake prophet? Again, we are not against the Muslims. I don't hate the Muslims. I would never hate them. Even after all what happened, now and before and for the last 1400 years, this is why I'm saying that the problem is not the Muslims. The problem is this filthy cult. We need to stand up together and we need to fight this cult, not the Muslims. As long as there is people believe in those Yellow Pages books, there is somebody you want to kill. People don't go and see where the roots is coming from. They want to judge only those who did it. Nobody want to judge the books which made them do it. The cult of Islam is the problem. The first arrest is Muhammad. Why you want to arrest a terrorist who did it today, but you don't want to go after the first terrorist who established terrorism? And again, my advice to the Christians, don't fail into the trap of hate. Don't hate the Muslims. This is not what we want. I don't want to hate the Muslims. The problem is hate. The problem is hate. So we cannot solve the problem by hate. If we hate each other, Muhammad is successful. This is the whole point. You want to convince them that they hate you. So you should hate them. We as a Christian, we have to be Christians to the end. Love your enemy. Pray for them. We will be victorious by love, not by hate. Now for sure we will fight the terrorists. And we have the right to defend ourselves. But we will not hate the Muslims. Be sure to be always a Christian. And standing and saying the truth. But don't fail into the hated trap. Hate is a trap. One who teaches it is the first victim. For all of us, we are target for this cult. The one who was in the buffet, not only Christians. Imagine you go to a buffet. You want to eat. You are hungry. You end dead. Why? Because somebody, he believe in Allah, he decide to kill you.